So in this short video I want to talk about something that many of you have asked me before. Namely, if you're conducting a mixed methods study, mixed methods research, where you have both quantitative and qualitative methods of data collection, what kind of worldviews or philosophical assumptions uh, should you discuss or should you consider? So uh, in this video I'll talk about this and also I will suggest uh, a philosophical stance, a philosophical worldview, which in my opinion is a very suitable one for this kind of studies and uh, generally something for you to consider and maybe read about. So to summarize uh, the problem, the issue with worldviews and a mixed methods study, as I explained uh, in my previous videos that I will link to uh, from this video, uh, we have these uh, traditionally two main uh, philosophical worldviews or paradigms. So I talked about interpretivism and I talked about positivism. And they are quite con uh, contrasting. And as I explained, uh, traditionally, uh, we tend to think of qualitative research in terms of uh, interpretivism and quantitative research in terms of uh, positivism. So uh, to briefly discuss uh, these paradigms, positivism, as I said before, is something that uh, values and emphasizes uh, the scientific inquiry. So being objective, being an objective observer, uh, it also emphasizes the world as something relatively stable, so a kind of a structure. And therefore, when we investigate this world, we want to be, as I said, objective. We want to uh, be a neutral observer. We don't want to influence uh, what we are observing. Uh, and therefore, uh, the most uh, effective and valuable methods for uh, positivists are uh, quantitative methods. So quantitative methods of data collection, uh, such as observations or questionnaires because we don't want to be biased we don't want our uh, personal interpretations uh, to basically ruin everything and on the other hand uh, interpretivists are quite different so uh, they see the world as something uh, quite flexible and dynamic and changing and something that to a very great extent depends on on the people who live in this world so of course uh, the only way to uh, explore this world and to understand it is to talk to people. So, so this is quite a contrast to positivists who believe that uh, the only thing that may result from talking to people is bias and generally uh, mess with our study. So here in interpretivist uh, tradition is quite the opposite. So we really want to uh, gain a very deep understanding of these individual perspectives because we believe that the sum of these individuals and these individual perspectives uh, together uh, create and make this uh, whole reality around us. So the problem or the issue with uh, mixed methods research and, and worldviews uh, is as follows. So if we have uh, these uh, quantitative and qualitative methods uh, combined in a mixed methods study, uh, and these methods are traditionally associated with uh, quite contrasting worldviews, what do we do about it? Uh, which worldview do we do we choose or how do we explain that? Uh, how do we justify it? And here uh, two main approaches to uh, to solving, to addressing this problem uh, exist. They are quite different and quite contrasting, but both of them are in fact quite popular. So it's not like one of them is more controversial than the other. And the first approach argues that uh, what we do when we have a mixed method study, so let's say we have an, an explanatory study where we start with quantitative methods, uh, which are then followed by qualitative methods. So let's say we start a study with a questionnaire. So according to this first approach, uh, what happens is that we start the study with uh, assuming this uh, positivist worldview, uh, so again the one that's more about uh, being scientific and objective and, and this stable world. Uh, and then as we move uh, towards the second phase of the study, so let's say we have interviews and focus groups, what happens is that we are making a shift towards a more uh, flexible or more interpretivist approach and interpretivist uh, worldview. So in practice, uh, if we talk about our methods and we talk about our study and then our, our worldviews, what we do is we cover these two different worldviews and explain how we started with this and then we made a shift towards the other. And as I said, this is not a controversial uh, approach and many scholars, many people uh, tend to agree with it and like it. But to be honest, uh, I personally do not really uh, like this idea of uh, making this shift uh, from one worldview to the other. And the reason is that I think that uh, we generally have uh, 
uh, one world view and and uh, this is not to say that I'm saying we only can have one belief or one attitude towards something but but one world view even if it's a very flexible world view where where we accept both uh, you know both ideas so both the importance of scientific inquiry and being objective and the importance of individual perspectives and individual beliefs and experiences it's still I would describe it as one flexible or general or inclusive worldview uh, to me by definition a world uh, these two contrasting worldviews uh, mean that they are in fact contrasting so how can we uh, believe one thing at the beginning of the study just because uh, just because uh, the methods uh, at that stage suit uh, what do we want to do or achieve uh, in the study and then we make a switch or shift towards a completely contrasting worldview which in fact uh, tends to disagree with the first one and tends to discredit the claims made so people following that worldview usually don't really agree with what people following the other one uh, say so to me as I said this is a conflicting situation I don't really like this approach and the second approach to addressing this issue uh, and this is something that has emerged already when I was discussing the first approach the second approach argues that we should in fact uh, choose one worldview uh, no matter how flexible or inclusive it is but we should choose one worldview that fix uh, that uh, matches and suits uh, all the assumptions guiding underlying the study so uh, matches the methods and and the assumptions and beliefs that uh, these methods reflect and the worldview that uh, these people uh, quite often put forward is uh, called pragmatism and this is something that I want uh, you to know about. Not everybody knows about pragmatism, but uh, learning about pragmatism when I was a student uh, pretty much saved my life because I was extremely confused with this whole idea of different worldviews. And also I was uh, conducting mixed methods study. So when I learned about pragmatism, I actually realized this is exactly how I feel about the study, about investigations, about the world. Uh, so pragmatism is uh, known as a very flexible approach uh, and worldview and uh, it emphasizes and encourages to uh, to basically make use of whatever works in the study so uh, so the most important uh, part the most important aim is simply is uh, to answer the research questions and this is something again if you've watched my videos I keep saying that and even without thinking about worldviews, I still, I naturally keep saying that to answer our research questions is the most important thing, especially when doing our data analysis. So, and this is in fact what pragmatism argues. So this is the main, uh, the priority is to answer the research questions and to, to use whatever means possible just to achieve that goal without uh, necessarily thinking about this uh, dichotomy, uh, this distinction between positivism, interpretivism, and possibly other approaches simply do whatever you think will be effective whatever 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 you think will help you answer your research questions and co uh, collect the data that you need in order to answer it and to describe uh, the assumptions of uh, pragmatism in uh, even more philosophical uh, terms uh, basically pragmatism recognizes that uh, the reality is constructed by individuals in fact but at the same time uh, this is a reconstruction of something relatively stable that exists so like i said this is a very uh, philosophical and abstract uh, statement but this is exactly why uh, pragmatism values both uh, the assumptions of interpretivist uh, views and positivist views so so it is constructed by the reality is constructed by individuals so this is a very interpretive thing to say but at the same time uh, they acknowledge that these are reconstructions of something relatively stable that exists which is typically uh, what would uh, what positivists would say moreover uh, pragmatists emphasize uh, the importance of empirical observation which is again something traditionally associated with our positivism but at the same time they uh, they stress that these observations rely on the researchers interpretation of these observation observations so this is again our interpretivism here and finally uh, pragmatists recognize uh, that there exists certain established uh, stable social structures this is again our positivist uh, idea but at the same time they acknowledge uh, the role of people in establishing and constructing these 
these uh, social structures, which is a very interpretive thing to say. So, uh, so as I uh, explained, this is really a mix of uh, of certain assumptions uh, from both positivist and interpretivist approaches. As I said, I do encourage you to look into pragmatism, uh, especially if you're struggling with uh, choosing your worldview. And I know that a lot of you are struggling. A lot of you have asked me this question. I know that usually you are required to talk about worldviews and philosophical assumptions, uh, especially if you're a student. Uh, and at the same time, sometimes it's, it's simply confusing. And this is how I felt when I was a student. I felt that I kind of agreed with, with both. So I kind of thought, okay, uh, it is important to talk to people. It is important to know their, uh, their ideas and their views, but I don't necessarily think that this is uh, everything. And, and this is the only thing that uh, constructs the, the reality around us. And I also agreed that, of course, there must be something stable. And this is why I uh, decided to use questionnaires in my study as well. Although traditionally uh, and naturally, I wouldn't say I'm a quantitative type of, of person. But this doesn't mean that I, I argue that uh, to use quantitative methods is completely uh, useless. I hope that you found this video useful. If you're new to this channel, this channel is all about helping you develop and conduct research that will make an impact. So consider subscribing and liking this video to help it get found online.